Hey everyone, Mike A here with ebikeschool.com. And I know it's hard to believe it's January, it looks beautiful out here, but it is, it's a new year, and that means it's time to announce my predictions for what we're gonna see in the e-bike market in the coming year. And stay tuned to the end of this video where I'm gonna look at my five predictions from last year and see how right I was. Spoiler alert, I got some on the nose and some I was a bit off. First off, I think we're gonna see a lot more importance placed on safety certifications, things like UL listed batteries, that sort of thing. It's becoming a major topic this year. There have been a number of battery fires, unfortunately, usually arising from really cheap produced batteries. So I think that we're gonna see a, a huge importance really put on this year for uh, UL listed batteries and complying with volunteer safety certifications and potentially even seeing some mandatory safety certifications imposed as well. It's probably more than a year out for those mandatory measures, but certainly some of those um, certifications that companies can just sort of volunteer to do, I think we're gonna see a lot more of that being incorporated into new e-bikes that are coming out. Next, I think we're gonna see a lot more of these e-bike uh, tax credits, incentives, rebates, that sort of thing. Basically programs that are created to help make electric bicycles more affordable. In the United States, it's already really picking up steam. Europe, you guys are doing a good job with that already. But the US, uh, after the federal tax incentive for e-bikes failed last year, what was written to be part of the Inflation Reduction Act that was gonna give something like 750 to $900 off of new e-bike purchases, that failed in, the, uh, in Congress. And so now we're starting to see a few states and even cities pick up the slack there. Uh, Denver had an awesome program last year. We're hearing about programs that are being talked about in Oregon, in uh, New York, uh, Atlanta, Tennessee. I think it's just a Nashville program there, but uh, we're starting to see some, uh, some movement there. And I think that 2023 is really gonna be a big year for local city and state governments to step up and say, all right, we want to incentivize electric bike purchases. We wanna help people buy these these fairly expensive vehicles because they offer so much good. You know, they get cars off the road, they remove emissions, they make people healthier, that sort of thing. So investing in that, I think, is going to become a, a big aspect of the e-bike industry, and it'll be interesting to see how that affects prices as well. Now, when it comes to prices, I think we're going to see more low-cost, yet actually pretty good quality e-bikes. Over the last few years, we've seen a lot of new companies come in with just kind of junky e-bikes, really just trash on wheels, and it's unfortunate to see that. But I think as component prices are coming down, we're gonna to start to see more of these higher quality, low cost e-bikes. It used to be that maybe two or three years ago, $1,500 got you an e-bike with mechanical disc brakes, a 48 volt, 12, 14 amp hour battery, and uh, maybe five, 750 watts of power. Something, you know, pretty basic standard like that. Nowadays, that doesn't cut it anymore. We're starting to see prices come down on decent quality parts and, and decent bikes. I think that in 2023, we're really gonna see a lot more of these e-bikes in the 13, 14, $1,500 range that actually come with hydraulic brakes, that come with better shifters, color displays, uh, nicer motors, bigger batteries, that sort of thing. And so it's really gonna help uh, bring prices down or at least keep prices level while giving us better quality bikes instead of those sort of junky bikes for the same price that we've seen a lot of from these uh, fly-by-night companies. Next, I think we're gonna see even more of the cargo and utility bikes, as well as e-trikes, electric tricycles. Now, I know what you're thinking, all right, you just saw the Rad Trike and the Electric XP Trike come out, so you're saying there's gonna be more trikes, but I promise you, I actually wrote this video on December 27th of last year, after the Rad Trike was unveiled, but before the Electric XP Trike. And so I know it looks like I'm just sort of cherry picking after seeing those two trikes come out, but I've been feeling this way for a while, and I think it's gonna continue. I don't think those are the last two trikes we're gonna see. For one thing, Rad Power Bikes, when they make a move and they create a new model, we often see many second followers coming. Uh, we saw that with models like the uh, Rad Runner. Um, we're gonna see it, I think, with models like the Rad Trike. We've already seen that XP Trike come out with a lower price point. And so I think we're gonna see more investment in the trike space, especially as we have this you know, growing wave of baby boomers that are saying, I wanna get back on a bike, but I don't feel comfortable on an uh, electric two-wheeler because of balance issues or my knees or any sorts of you know, things like that. At the same time, though, I think we're going to continue to see a lot more of these utility and cargo bikes as well. Bikes that can do more than just one thing. Bikes that can, you know, do a little bit of off-roading, that can carry cargo, that can carry a second passenger, that sort of thing. So you get a lot of bang for your buck with one bike that serves many roles. And lastly, my fifth prediction is that I think we're going to see more e-bikes from non-e-bike companies. Specifically, a lot of car companies are starting to get into e-bikes, and I think this is really going to become a thing in 2023, where we see companies that never before produced e-bikes 
folks either teaming up, partnering their way to an electric bike, or developing their own. It's something we have seen a little bit in the past. A few years ago, GM started designing an electric bike. Uh, we've seen partnerships, uh, but I think we're going to see more of this, of automotive companies saying, hey, we want to get into this market where we see you know, significantly higher volume sales, and they want to get a piece of that pie. So that's another thing I think we're going to see, a lot of car companies and automakers getting into the e-bike game. All right, so those were my top five predictions for the e-bike market in 2023, but let's take a look back and see how accurate I was with my predictions last year. I think we're going to see bigger battery packs, much bigger. Generally, I think 48 volt, 20 amp hour, is going to start to become a pretty common standard. Okay, so this one, we did see a number of new e-bikes with 48 volt, 20 amp hour batteries, some even bigger. The electric X Premium came out with two 500 watt hour batteries, making it a thousand watt hours. We saw Ad Motor come out with their new battery system, 48 volts, 20 amp hours. I reviewed a G-Force e-bike that had a 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery. So we saw a number of these sort of smaller companies or lesser known sort of side brands coming out with those. But for the most part, the bigger companies didn't really jump on the giant battery bandwagon. I think the, the biggest name company that did is probably Juiced. They've really invested in this 48 volt, actually there's a 52 volt 20 amp hour or 19 point something amp hour. So they're building one kilowatt hour batteries. Companies like, uh, you know, Aventon, Rad, a lot of those companies are still stuck in this sort of six, 700 watt hour space. So we did see a lot of new e-bikes with these big batteries, but they came more from the, the side smaller companies and not as much from the main e-bike companies that we see every day. My next prediction is that we're gonna see more sort of all-purpose e-bikes. E-bikes that cover all these different areas, things that can carry passengers, cargo, utility, that sort of thing. Now we definitely saw more of these utility style e-bikes that I was talking about. Rad Power Bikes updated their Rad Runner with the Rad Runner 2. We saw knockoffs of that specific utility bike, things like the Fido T1. Uh, Razor came out with a scooter version of a Rad Runner. And so we definitely saw more of those utility style e-bikes. I know that I sort of made that prediction again this year, though I think we're gonna see more of the expansion into cargo and trikes this year as opposed to that style of shorter wheelbase utility bike. But I definitely think that we saw several companies come out with sort of clones of that popular style of uh, utility bike, definitely a, a sort of a short wheelbase cargo bike. Next, I think we're gonna see more weeding out of some of the smaller brands that have popped up this year. So this one, I don't think I'm gonna sprain my wrist trying to pat myself on the back over this prediction. I'm not sure that we saw that much dying out of these smaller e-bike companies. I really thought we would, but I guess sales were strong enough in 2022 to still maintain some of these smaller ancillary companies. A few of them seem to have disappeared. Uh, I tested a few Mack wheel bikes a couple years ago that it seems like Mack wheel's gone now. Uh, I don't hear too much about Natco anymore, but for the most part, these smaller companies are still somehow hanging in there with um, you know, some of them still coming out with new bikes. Hay Bike came out with like three different bikes. So some of these newer companies are or somehow, you know, sticking it out. I'm good for them, I guess. Lastly, my fifth prediction is that we're gonna see a whole new wave of improved customer service. So this one, again, I think this was not one of my successful predictions. Uh, you know, we, we certainly saw some improvements in customer service over the year, but at the same time, we saw some companies take strides to say, we're gonna improve this because we haven't done the best job. Uh, Rad Power Bikes just sent out a mass email to their entire customer base saying they're working on the new Rad after sort of admitting to some mistakes being made, working on improving their customer service, though they've already got a massive customer service team. So I'm not sure how much more can be done there. But I, I think that we're still seeing companies trying to make that effort to improve customer service. And we haven't really seen the, the improvements and leaps and bounds that I thought we would last year. So that one, not one of my better predictions. All right, so there you have it. Those are my top five predictions for the e-bike market in 2023, as well as a look back at how I did last year. But I wanna hear what you guys think. What do you think's coming this year that I didn't even address? Let me know in the comments section down below. And speaking of which, it is time to announce the winning commenter for my last video. So the randomly selected commenter is... Lost Cylon. Congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You could choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. If you don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you here next time. <music>